Hey, beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. During our time together, I'm going to help you take time to be still, sit with the Father, and prayerfully reflect using the five principles that have helped me, and I believe they can help you too, to change your perspective and get clear about God's will for you so you can be intentional about what you give your time and attention to, enter God's rest, and experience the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons that he has ordained for you in this season. Spiritual seasons can be compared to the recurring seasons of nature, winter, spring, summer, and fall. As the years go by and time moves forward, winter, spring, summer, and fall recur at their set times each year, and each season brings its distinct weather and purpose. Although spiritual seasons don't recur every year, they each have distinct spiritual purposes and they can and often do recur throughout our lifetimes. Spring can be compared to seasons of new beginnings and sowing what you hope to reap in the future. Summer can be compared to the seasons when what you have sown begins to show growth and promise and the path to your purpose, the fulfillment of your promise and what God has shown you begins to sprout up and you can see it clearer. It gives you hope. Then fall can be compared to the seasons when bring the full harvest of what you've sown, watered and waited for. Winter can be compared to what I like to call night seasons or seasons of darkness and difficulties in which you grow through trials, tests, and temptations. The lessons that you learn, the blessings you gain, the purposes you discover, and the beauty that you capture in your other seasons is what sustains your hope, gives you peace, and faith to get through your winter seasons. When you focus on the good things in your winter seasons, they can also become times of rest and preparation for your future seasons of sowing, waiting, and reaping. But here's the thing, every season has a beginning and an ending. No matter how wonderful or how hard, every season has a beginning and an ending with its own purpose, its own lessons, its own beauty, and its own blessings that God has ordained for you. You just have to see things from God's perspective to discover them. You do that by changing the questions you ask him in prayer. Instead of asking God why things are happening, try ask him, asking him what he is doing in your season and what he's working out for your good. This is what I know for sure. No matter what season you are in, God is always with you. He is always for you. And he is always willing to guide you in his plan for your life. When you walk with God through your spiritual seasons, he will reveal his heart to you and give you rest in your soul. My prayer for you, whether you're in the midst of your own personal winter, spring, summer, or fall is that the principles I'm about to share with you would help you see things from God's perspective and gain clarity about his will for you. So you can stop trying to figure things out on your own and take things into your own hands and make things happen for yourself and instead enter God's rest so you can enjoy the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and the lessons he has ordained for you in this season. As we go through each of the five principles, I'm going to ask you to pause the video after each one to sit with the Father and prayerfully reflect. Before we begin, I want you to take time to write down what spiritual season you believe you're in right now. You can pause the video. Now let's begin. Number one, lean in. Luke 10, 42 says, but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good portion which cannot be taken away from her. Mary chose the one thing that was needed. To lean in is to focus on something without allowing anything to distract you from your goal 
or the object of your attention until you have accomplished what you set out to do. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. That's what she chose. It's choosing something. We should always be leaning into God's presence. We should always be leaning into God's presence and his word to fellowship with him and to continue to grow spiritually. However, in every season, there is something specific, a goal, a dream, a principle that God wants you to lean into, a discipline that he wants you to focus on. If you ask him to show you the one or few things that you need to lean into, he may surprise you. It may be something that has never occurred to you. Once God reveals what you need to lean into, focus on doing that one or a few things, whether you understand God's reasons, reasoning or not. Above everything, put that first. Being obedient to what God guides you to do will open the way for him to reveal what he has prepared for you. Pause the video and pray. Father, please show me the one or few things you would have me to lean into during this season and write what he shows you. Number two. John 10, 28 says, My sheep hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. Listening goes beyond the act of hearing, which is why I love that Jesus said they hear and listen to me. Hearing is the process of perceiving sound. Listening is hearing something with thoughtful intention to understand what you're hearing. When you listen to God's voice, it should be with the intention to obey what you hear. And every season, there will be many voices, but not every voice is from God. God's voice and those he uses to speak to you will align with his word and his will for you. God's voice brings clarity and guidance through the word of his instruction, direction, and correction. If you ask him, he will show you how to discern his voice from voices that would lead you astray, and he will help you learn to listen and obey when he speaks to you in different ways. Because yes, God speaks to us in different ways, through his word, through people, through nature, through his Holy Spirit inside of us. Pause and pray this prayer. Father, help me to discern your voice from other voices and learn to obey your voice and not follow other voices. Please help me to identify any voices of doubt, fear, or negativity that I have been listening to and give me the courage to stop giving my ear to them. And also help me to know what voices I should be listening to because God in different seasons will ask us, will lead us to listen to different sermons, different preachers and teachers and ministers because they have a word that is going to encourage us and help us grow. Just like he tells us to turn off other voices, he wants us to turn on something. He may want you to focus on a chapter, a chapter in, in his word or a book of the Bible. Ask him and write what he shows you. Number three, lay down. I was going to write this one as let go, but to let go is to just drop it. But there are things that God asks us to lay down. John 15, 13 says, greater love has no one than this, that they would lay down their life for their friend, that someone laid down their life for his friends. When you lay something or someone down for God, you are surrendering your hold on it and giving it to God to do whatever he wishes with it. You are literally laying it on the spiritual altar. In every season, there will be things God asks you to lay down, to surrender to him. He may ask you to lay down something or someone permanently, counting it a loss for the sake of following and knowing him. It may be only for a season with his plan being to raise it to life again, to recon reconcile that relationship or give you back that thing that he asked for. Surrendering something or someone precious to you isn't easy to do, 
When God asks you to lay something down, it may seem unfair or even a bit painful at first, but you can trust that anytime he asks you to lay something down, it's because he has something better for you. However, you will never know what it is unless you lay down what he asks of you. Pause and pray this prayer. Father, what would you have me to lay down in this season? Write what he shows you. Number four, lift up. Luke 19, 16 says, Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. Just as God asks you to lay things down, there will be people and things he instructs you to hold on to. These are the things and people you need to keep lifted in prayer before the Father to bless, to heal, to restore, to re redeem, and to multiply. And it's not always easy. Sometimes it will be things that you would rather let go of or lay down that he tells you that you need to keep holding on to in hope. And in the same way that Jesus, looking up to heaven, blessed the bread and the fish and fed the multitude, I think of prayer as lifting something or someone up to the Lord to bless what I have lifted up to him, knowing that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask, think, or imagine when I allow him to work through my faith-filled prayers. And he will do the same for you. And when he entrusts you to pray for something or someone, find people that will pray with you and for you and keep you lifted in prayer as you continue to lift in prayer what God has entrusted to you. And then set your will to continue in prayer until you see a breakthrough because the Father has entrusted it to you. Pause and pray this prayer. Father, what would you have me to keep lifted before you in prayer during this season? Write what he shows you. Number five, learn. <laughs> Psalm 119.73 says, your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. There are lessons to be learned in every season, and sometimes the hardest seasons produce the greatest lessons, but there are also lessons to be learned in seasons of joy, rest, and harvest. In seasons of ease, the lessons God wants you to learn are often the hardest to discern. However, these are the lessons that will carry you through the seasons of drought, dryness, testing, and trial. Read Proverbs 6 verse 8 to see what I'm talking about. If you make it your aim to be teachable and willing to learn in every season, looking for the lessons life offers you day, daily, and be willing to unlearn what is not profitable for you, as well as learn learning new ways of doing things. God will give you, understand you, and show you the lessons he has for you. Pause and pray this prayer. Father, Give me understanding and help me discern the lessons you want me to learn in this season. Write what he shows you. Well, beloved, I hope the principles I have shared with you have helped you. Those five questions, when we sit with the Father and we answer them, they do give us clarity and they do show us. They will show you what he wants you to focus on and what he wants you to give your time and attention to. And if you follow what he shows you and obey what he is speaking to you, then you will enter God's rest when you trust him at his word and obey him. And then what happens is, 
You're not distracted trying to figure things out. You're not distracted trying to do a million things. And you have time to actually discern and see the beauty, the blessings, the purpose, and lessons in your everyday life. It can be little things or it can be big things, but you will have time to see them. You will be undistracted. You will be unhurried. And you will have an open heart to be able to receive what God is doing and see how he is working everything for your good. And so I hope that this encouraged you and you can go to crystalpetafort.com and there you can download this guide as well. Five clarifying questions for every season of life. These questions work in every season. I've tested them, I've tried them, and I use them sometimes daily in my prayer time when I need to refocus, when I need clarity, when I need to remove distractions and just get back on what God says. I use these questions and it brings me back to center. It takes away the busyness and I enter God's rest because I hear from him when I ask the right questions. God bless you and I hope that you enjoyed this.